in 1997, I was asked to do a spiritual mapping of Tampa. I faced one of the most mind-blowing paranormal experiences that I have personally ever documented. It has to do with the trauma that this place kind of has experienced in that area, and I really think that that's exciting. I was creeped out automatically. Oh, dude, look at that. That stuff's been pretty incredible. What about this gate is a portal? Where did it come from? And it's been pretty intelligent. I asked God to show me and lead me to where a spiritual gate was. And my eye caught that gate. I want to know the story behind this gate. You're not going to come against my friends. You're not going to come against my family. And I'm going to stand here until you let go. In 1997, a woman by the name of Vanessa Milligan was asked to do a spiritual mapping of Pampa. She's a very godly woman, very spiritual woman. And during this time, she's driving around town and she's asking God to show her or give her a sign of a gateway because she believes that Every town, every city has a gateway, a spiritual gateway. Well, not long ago, I met this woman for the very first time. And I will never forget what she told me when I met her. She looked me straight in my eyes and she said, Nathan, did you know there's a gate in this town that's a portal between heaven and earth? You can feel energy there. You can feel that something's there. And when you go, you'll experience something. You know, to be completely honest, when she told me about all of this, I was completely skeptical about all of it. Until days later, when I decided to drive to this gateway and approach it and experience it for myself. The very first day that I pulled up to the gate, I immediately felt nervous. And at the time, I didn't know why, because I had known after talking to Vanessa about what to expect, I kind of knew what I was walking into, but I didn't. So, of course, me being skeptical, I'm also a believer, so I was very nervous about it. The gate doesn't look like much. It really doesn't. It's very random it's very randomly put there it's very randomly just sitting in a, a spot in between two big old buildings and I remember walking up because all I had was a camera and myself and a microphone there was no tripod so I decided to put the camera on the curb and just start rolling. Right now I'm at the I'm at the gate where Vanessa believes that there's a a spiritual portal between our world and the spirit world. And it's right here in downtown Pampa and I'm going to try and document proof of that with the spirit box. You know, you went up to the gate um, and just like right away, you got a response. Hey, how are you? And of course, I am talking back to it, trying to engage in conversation, trying to establish a connection with whatever spirit was there. When Nathan had first approached the gate, 
um, he immediately got a response, and that's what I found was interesting. It was as if something or someone was waiting for him. Oh, my gosh. When you walked up, you definitely heard somebody go, hey, it's like acknowledge you. Yes, I'm here. I remember asking a series of questions, you know, just to see if I could get any type of a response from the things that Vanessa was telling me. Do you know Vanessa Milligan? I had asked if it knew Vanessa Milligan. Oh my God, I got a yes to that question. When I got that response, it shocked me because it was almost immediate. Just from having a, a little bit of experience with Spirit Box and that kind of communication, I know that that's actually pretty rare. So to hear that uh, as often was really exciting. The next question that I remember asking was, is this gate a portal? And is there spirit energy inside the gate? Is there a portal at this gateway? Is there spirit energy inside this gate? Immediately after I asked that question, I get a very crystal clear yep. I think that's absolutely crazy that his response back directly was yes. So, of course, you know, the skepticism that I was feeling before is starting to now go away because everything that Vanessa had told me that I was going to experience so far has happened. You know, anytime you approach a new situation or a new place, you kind of wonder, like, if anything knows that you're, you know, there to basically give them an interview. And that's kind of what he did. And, Almost every question he asked, he got a response, you know, um, asking if, is this a gateway? Is this a portal? And the answer was, yeah, you know, yes or yeah, almost any time he had asked. After getting these responses, I decided to pick the camera up, do a quick little vlog and document what was going on, the responses that I got. I got some yeses to some questions. They're very quick, but they're there. So I did, however, find an opening to this little area over here. So I'm gonna actually go and conduct another spirit box session over here inside the gate and see if I get anything off of that. I can immediately feel this, this wave of energy that's just lingering in the atmosphere. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's nothing of a natural cause. It's very different from what the atmosphere from the world around me is producing. It's very bizarre, very otherworldly, very thick. So because I'm feeling this, I ask, why am I feeling this energy? The next response I receive is yet again intelligent, but only opens the door to more questions. Because why? That's the question. It replied, because. Because there's good and there's evil. And there's a portal between the heavens and the earth, and it's called the middle the middle, middle earth, atmosphere. And that's where all the spiritual um, 
gatherings happen, if you want to call it so. Two days after this evidence was collected, I sent it to my crew, but Kara, our newest member, is the only one who is able to make the trip on short notice. My name is Kara Kidd, and this is my paranormal experience. She was the first that was able to make it, so her and I actually met up for the first time that day. I think it was very compelling. I. You never really know what you have until you start sitting still and, and recording and listening to what's going on in that area. And I really think that that's ex exciting. We started um, investigating here at this gateway that um, has been claimed to be a portal uh, from this world to the next. And so I uh, instantly was very interested in it. Right before the filming of our next session, Kara reveals a compelling piece of information. Worley Combs building, the portal to Texas history. Put the phone down. Look, look. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The portal to Texas history. Yeah. That Weird is word insane, man. Before we conduct our next investigation, I have to know the history behind this gate. And there's only one person that can tell me. Vanessa, thank you for meeting with me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I want to know the story behind this gate. Give me some history on it. My name is Vanessa Milligan, and this is my paranormal experience. Okay, let me tell you a little bit of, of the background of how I found out about the gate. In 1997, I was asked to do a spiritual mapping of Pampa. And a spiritual mapping is where you go and you find the historical places that um, history that different things happened at. There's always, always, you can't prove it, but there is always in a city a gate that even the Bible talks about in Genesis that God gives us authority to go and take the gate of the enemy. And when they went to seize the gate, just like, like Jericho, the enemy had come and seized the city of Jericho, and it was tightly shut up, and none could go in and none could come out. So I said, I asked God to show me and lead me to where a spiritual gate was. So I was looking in the city, I'd drive around at nighttime, and my eye caught that gate. Well, the first time I experienced the gate in Pampa, it was a rainy night, it was drizzling outside, and I knew that I needed to go and approach that gate. And when I got out of my car to go approach the gate, my whole body was terrified. That's how I can, t that's how I can describe it to you. I started shaking from the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet. I felt my heart pounding out of my chest. Upon getting there, I noticed almost right away that there was a lot of energy in the air. I could feel it in my hands, I could feel it in my arms. Things were very behind the scenes during this whole investigation. You know, it's kind of on the go. I was very interested in knowing what type of evidence or responses we would capture while we were there. And now that I have an eyewitness to anything that is further captured, we'll be able to really validate and confirm any, any further activity that takes place. When I approached the gate, it... I was so scared inside, but also compelled that I needed to go and touch that gate. And at the time I knew that, I knew that I felt like I needed to go there because there are so many different 
answers that I wanted to know why there was so much trauma in Pampa. And so as I went and approached that gate and laid my hands on it, I wanted to proclaim that it wasn't gonna harm me or my family. I was so fearful that that something was gonna to happen to my family and my friends. And so that's why I wanted to go and touch that gate, but it left me mortified. And then I, when I got to the gate, you could feel this energy just like you're sucked in and you go, it's just up in the air. And I knew I was in a different world or manner. Just like Vanessa, I soon experienced the same exact energy that she just described. Okay, so right now we are currently at the gate and uh, we start rolling camera and we're fixing to start investigating at the entrance of the gate. The energy that I felt at that entrance was very weird. It's a very strange and thick texture of energy that I, that I felt. Wow, that feels weird. It feels very strange. It's like when I get here to it, it's just a straight wind of energy that comes through here. I'm very aware of the electrical outlets and currences and all these connections that are here in this building, but there's a big difference between spiritual electricity and natural electricity. And I feel like I experienced spiritual because of the way, I feel like I was walking through a vortex. What is that? Like this isn't just any gust of air either. This is like a straight. What response stood out the most to you that we caught? Pull. Now keep in mind, Kara, is running camera right now. She has a headset on that allows her to monitor audio coming in and out from the camera. Anything that is said, anything that comes through that spirit box, she is going to hear it. We went through and asked if there was a gateway. What about this gate? is a portal. A few minutes later, I start rolling on the spirit box and I ask Kara to move closer to me so we can document any response coming through. Well, I had asked a question along the lines of what is the purpose of this portal and where does it come from what about this gate is a portal where did it come from a voice comes through and I miss it I don't fully understand what was said but like I said before, Kara is monitoring audio. She hears everything. And what she tells me, this spirit box says, what the response is, I am in complete disbelief by it. Where did it come from? Both worlds. Are you kidding me? He said both worlds. After reviewing the footage and hearing what this spirit box just said to me and said out loud at the entrance, blows my mind. It said both worlds. Both worlds. Are you kidding me? He said both worlds. And someone clearly said both worlds. Just given the story that she told, 
and I was coming up here to investigate that is this a portal or not, and then getting that voice to come through the box, yeah, that stuck out to me. You cannot argue with that evidence. This is how I'm gonna explain this. Go for it. You can believe it or you cannot. Um, she explained uh, going up to the gate, holding it um, onto the lock of the gate. And she said that it was like shaking hands with someone. I took my right hand and I grabbed a hold of the gate and the lock was right here. And it was like shaking hands with someone. And have you ever took a sh handshake and you want to see who's the strongest yeah. and who's, who can give up the closest. Right. And I, I can still feel it right now. My hand, I just held it tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And it would get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And it's like, I'm not going to let go because I know the injustice. You're not going to come against my friends. You're not going to give them against my family. And I'm going to stand here until you let go. The next day, we are joined by our crew member Scotty as we investigate the gate for the very first time at night. What did you think about the, uh, the uh, evidence that we caught? I thought it was pretty incredible. I mean, just the fact that like, as soon as y'all walk up here, it was just instant responses. Hey, how are you? Do you know Vanessa Milligan? Oh my God, I got a yes to that question. I know that the gate footage, I mean, that stuff's been pretty incredible and it's been pretty intelligent. Is there spirit energy inside this gate? Well, for me, per you know, I grew up in Pampa and I've seen that gate sitting down there all, you know, for the last 28, 29 years never occurred to me that that gate could harbor so much energy as it does. And to have us come up to it and then right off the bat we're receiving intelligent responses through spirit boxes and EVPs and stuff like that, it's really amazing to me. What about this gate is a portal? Where did it come from? Both worlds. Are you kidding me? He said both worlds. It's pretty interesting to know that there's this gate that could potentially be a portal that's just sitting in my hometown and has been since I've you know lived here, which was my whole life. But I pass behind, you know, I pass by that gate almost every day. Never would think anything of it. And then you happen to meet one particular lady who says, as soon as you walk up to that gate, you're gonna experience it. And as soon as we walked up to this gate, we experienced it. This is the first time that we are entering this gateway at nighttime, very first time. I don't know what we're gonna get or what to expect. Both y'all are running camera. Y'all are the eyes and ears that I can't see or hear. Y'all see everything that's going on. If y'all see, feel, hear anything, note it, okay? Let's go. Get out. Get out. Get out. I just heard get out. Why would we need to get out for? Is this gate really a portal like the rumors we've heard? Can I just repeat it to me? Scotty receives a voice that we think says portal but we will let you, the viewer, decide. Can I just repeat it to me? Can I just repeat it to me? So this is a portal. 
What's it a portal to? Just the spirit world or is it something deeper? Is it something deeper? Or is it something deeper? Hearing the response that Scotty just got is so refreshing. Whenever I first started this, when our crew first started this investigation, Vanessa had told me that there was a, a gateway between heaven and earth and there's energy there and when we approach it, we would experience something. And that is exactly what is happening right now. So this is a portal. What's it a portal to? Just the spirit world or is it something deeper? Is it something deeper. Is it something deeper. About a week later, I am at the gate filming for this documentary right now. And I'm just getting some B-roll shots of the gate and the property. There is an older gentleman, probably in his 70s, early 80s, that is literally standing right next to me. And as I'm turning to walk to my car to load up my gear, I run right into him. He asks me some questions. He says, hey son, do you mind if I ask what you're doing? And of course, my response and my reaction was, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. And I said, yes sir, I'm just filming the location I'm making a documentary, and uh, the next question that he asks me, I will never forget it. He says, he, as he's looking around, as if he's curious about something, he says, do you feel it? And at this point, I already know where this is going, but just because I want to know what his response is going to be, I say, do I feel what? He looks at me and says, do you feel the energy that this gate gives off? My heart drops directly into my stomach when I hear this. So my next response was, yes, sir, I do feel it. He then asks, asks me if I've caught any evidence. And I tell him, yes, we've caught, we've caught some evidence. And he tells me, <laughs> you know what my building used to be, don't you? And I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, if you look directly into this gate, right above it, you will see an old faded painted banner that says G.C. Malone Funeral Home. Nathan found out that it was part of, of it was an original funeral home to the area. He invited me into his office and he showed me a picture of the original funeral home from the 20s. The G.C. Malone Funeral Home was the original a funeral home of Pampa, Texas. And there are hundreds, hundreds of people, different personalities, different thing, different ways of life, different things that they were doing that came through this building on a daily basis to be, um, prepared for the embalming process and for their funeral. And so when he told me all of this information, I just asked the question, would you allow my team and myself to investigate 
this building. This man hands me the keys and says this key goes to the upper floor of the funeral home. You guys enjoy. So, after being granted permission into the building, Kara did some research on this building and she found some very incredible information and history that connects to this building and that could possibly connect to the gate. And so I had found some information about the history of there being a lot of like traumatic deaths in the area, which I feel like trauma, it does directly correlate with a lot of things that kind of stick around. There was a lot of unidentified bodies back then, people not being able to, I mean, you know, if you come visit town and something were to happen to you, heaven forbid, nobody knows who you are, you know, you have to sit in this building until someone claims you. By a certain time, if nobody claims you, they bury you with a random name or any kind of clues you have on you. If you maybe have like a, a jacket that has initials in it, that's what you're going to be buried as. We've been to many locations where we walk in and it's kind of hard to draw a breath and there's not really a reason for that here. Um, there's plenty, you know, circulation of air and stuff, so I don't see why, but um, coming in, that's what I felt and also kind of felt a little bit of sadness and it was, there is the creep factor. I mean, I don't know if it's because it's dark up here or whatever, but as soon as I walked up the stairs, I was creeped out almost automatically. It was just that vibe. Now that we have permission to investigate the upper floor of the funeral home, we decide to take Beth to the gate for the first time. And when Kara approaches the gate, we are yet again greeted by something. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, have you been enjoying my singing? This little th area too. Uh, it's some, it's attached. This is where they probably brought the bodies in and out. Ooh, that is where they they would have. Yeah, I guarantee Come here. It, it smells is. like death. Does it? Come smell it. I love the smell of death. Come smell it. <laughs> Doesn't it though? Mm -hmm. Hmm. This would have to be where they brought the bodies in for sure. With this investigation we've been doing, Kara did a whole bunch of research on. Um, murders in the area and so forth. So she came across the story of Ruby Hillard and Mr. Brown. There used to be a shoe store and there was also uh, the Singer sewing machine factory sales floor. And a young woman named Ruby Hilliard had uh, worked there. Mr. Brown he was a young, he was just a few years older than him. I believe he took over for a, his parent and they also owned that shoe store. Something had happened between the two and it was left to be speculation in, in the newspaper that possibly there was some kind of uh, just disagreement between the two. It seemed that uh, there was, it, their, their relationship was coming to an end. And they were both seen speaking in low tones as she held a gun to him. And nobody really understood or heard what that conversation was about. But you could tell that she was, you know, from the story, she was very upset, of course. Something had really shook her up to the point of doing this terrible act, um, walking into Singer and basically shot him in the head, point blank, from the back. Then turned around and took her own life. It wasn't long after getting all of this evidence, all of these re uh, incredible responses that 
I actually called Scotty to go over the case, to go over all the evidence, to get his thoughts on everything that's been going on. And his next response to me, I found very, very interesting. He said, hey man, I think I may know what could be one of the many reasons for all of these intelligent hauntings that you and all of us have been experiencing. And I said, sure, man, you know, what's your thoughts? What do you think it could be? And he said, I believe what we are dealing with is a little thing called the stone tape theory. To better understand our current situation with the hauntings, Beth does extended research on the topic, the stone tape theory. With my research, it's not necessarily a theory, it's an idea. Um, so there was 1939-1940, there was an ex intellectualist and a medium um, by the names of uh, Edmund Gurney and Eleanor Sedgwick. And they are really the two that really pioneered or the idea of the stone tape theory. It does have to do with uh, emotional events or traumatic events. You know, some people say that it could be, it could create a portal. Kara's next question is in reference to the Ruby and Mr. Brown murder case. And the response that comes through is chilling. Like, it's hard for me to hear this. What did Mr. Brown do? More importantly, I'm not waiting long enough. More importantly, not waiting long enough. More importantly, not waiting long enough. Could it be possible that the response Kara just received is a spirit that could have been a witness to Mr. Brown's murder? And they were both seen speaking in low tones as she held a gun to him. Basically shot him in the head point blank from the back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start our investigation. Um, where do y'all want to set cameras up? Like, we need to get a game plan for that. Definitely down through a hallway. As we are setting up cameras in the main hallway of the funeral home, our periscope static sensor goes off. Oh, oh dude, look at that, dude! You got audio, Kara? Yeah. Okay. Two of them are balls. You can just roll them off. Did we capture that at all? Yes. Earlier? I got it a little bit on this camera. Okay. As soon as I saw it, I did roll. Okay. okay. So the gateway that is made of limestone, it, the whole structure is made of limestone, and then there is a metal gate that connects. And then the wall that is connected to the gate is brick. The hole all the way down the side is all brick, which would be another way to imprint any kind of event or feelings into. And not only that, going into the funeral home itself, uh, there's original wood flooring. The walls probably haven't changed too much. Even all the way down to the glass windows going into each office in the building. Uh, could also be a conductor or, you know, the emotions that went through that building, people in and out. So um, the whole place really is, you know, the idea of the stone tape. Just as Beth is starting her investigation, the periscope goes off once again. Is that a yes? Oh, great. Turn it awesome. back to red if we're in the right spot. Did you get that, bro? Hell yeah. I'm gonna come in here, I thought, of it's creepy as crap in here. Dude, y'all, this room's totally different vibe. I was standing in the hallway by myself earlier and it was very dark. And I thought I saw somebody step out this door from this office. Was that you? When did you realize the gate wasn't a threat? 
the moment that I heard about the tapes and you guys going up and you telling me about the limestone and the energy that's collected in the stones. As Beth is commenting about the creepy vibe this room gives off, I capture something shoot out of her shoulder. As Beth was asking questions, I remember filming her and, you know, she's opening herself up for communication. And as I'm filming her, I visually see from my camera something shoot out of her shoulder. Was that you? To me, it was definitive enough to where I stopped the session and I want to immediately go into a playback so Beth can actually see with her own eyes what was captured on film. Up there? Oh yeah, I saw that. It went up. That's weird, because dust falls. Watch. Something just literally shot out of Beth's shoulder, dude. Right there. And I know for a fact that was not part of our night vision, IR light reflector. They went straight up. Mm. Like you can see our, our reflectors here. Mm -hmm. Like you can see, like that's the reflection of night vision there. I know that for a fact. But as we get closer to here, you see it shoot directly from her, from her shoulder. This place is dusty. We have dust flying around all, all the time. You can tell that the dust kind of comes in and it'll kind of slowly trickle down, kind of looks like snowfall. So you can see the night vision coming right here mm -hmm. and then it shoots directly up. Right oh there. yeah, I saw that. That is not night vision contamination. And I wouldn't think it was dust either because dust mm -hmm. falls. No, it came straight from your, from your shoulder. As we're sitting there, you know, I know I'm operating one camera, you're operating the other. I turn to just kind of film the rest of the room, some doorways, just to kind of see if anything might show itself or whatever, you know, just kind of changing it up a little bit and you're still staying on Beth. And as I turn away, you can see a glare from the opposing IR lights on the cameras come up. You can see that kind of move when I move, but then there's this small little orb light that just shoots straight out of her shoulder and it's shooting up. I'm not saying that this piece of footage or this evidence is paranormal. I am not prepared to say that, but what I am prepared to say is I can't explain it. It's definitive enough to where I don't know what it is and I know for a fact it's not our night vision IR lights reflecting off each other. I saw this with my own eyes manifest out of her shoulder. Is it paranormal? I will leave that up to you to decide. I've been fearful of that gate since 1997. And before, when God showed me that gate, and I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh, this is real. And I'm, I'm, I'm not nuts that there is something going on at that gate. Are you stuck anywhere between the gate because of the limestone down there? What room do you want us to go in? What number? And we'll find it and we'll go in there and have a conversation with you. It stays constant. So I don't know if that's anything or... Because you come over here goes away, come this way, it gets up to about a 2.5, move this way and it disappears. Really? Okay. 
Were you good friends with the man who owned this funeral home? None of us even realize that a spirit is attempting to make a personal connection with Scotty. Now I went seven times in a row. And so the second time I went, I was not as fearful but you could feel almost as if there was something compelling me to just to grab it and move in forward into the gate because it was so it's almost like my body just vibrated but i wanted to know what it what what is that holding what is that in that gate that's what it was like we have all these materials surrounding us that are conductors of energy that you can use It's very clear to me that that gate outside, the structure of it is made of limestone. Like every type of element has a different um, frequency to it. And so frequency emits and absorbs energy. So that is just like a battery. I mean, in its own, in its own way, um, who's to say that spirit can't manipulate that for themselves? You've proven to me that that gate is a portal between your world and our world. The Bible says that he holds our tears in a bottle. Well, what's to say he couldn't hold his tears in that limestone? It melted me. It brought a source of, God, you really, you really hear our prayers. If you record it in, in that, that's the most awesome thing I can tell you, I mean, it just brings me so much joy to know, I mean, if, if the Bible says that he records our tears and holds them in a bottle, well, look at the shape of that, look at the shape of that gate. It almost looks like a bottle of tears for all the tears that anybody has shed of grief, of trauma, or even maybe even joy in there that people mistake for for grief. Can you come up and grab my hand like you did, Vanessa? And then I grabbed a hold of the gate and the lock was right here. And it was like shaking hands with something. And I think that there's still some spirits probably in this building that haven't figured out how to leave. Is this people that have passed through this gateway? You know, right. like the voices that we get? Or are these just people like in time or, or in an interdimensional trap or I don't know, that are passing in and out of this space? And it kind of makes you wonder like, are we going to be one of those voices someday of just moving through this, you know, a vortex? Like if, if that's really what's happening. My name is Beth Tussman. What's your name? George. Did you say your name was George? I really think that a lot of her experience had to do with even the environment the night that she first went there. It was raining. That's said to have a lot to do with the stone tape theory. Tons of energy. So the night that Vanessa went there and she saw the gate, got out of her car and walked up to it, I really think that she had to have felt a tremendous amount of energy. I know this sounds weird, so you want to hear it or not, Go this for it. sounds weird. I can feel it in the air. Oh, I can too. When something is, is going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And so I I don't know how you handle it, but every person, and I just start praying and covering the city because I know. I know when something's gonna happen that's devastating. We ended our night investigating as a team. And we went to other locations inside the building, different rooms, asking questions, doing spirit box sessions, 
and we didn't really get a lot of results from that so what we ended our investigation with was the blindfold experiment where you take all of your senses away so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little blindfold experiment Kara is going to be the one blindfolded she felt some stuff in the staircase earlier today off camera they kind of got you started a little bit so we're going to have her sit at the bottom of the staircase or just somewhere in the staircase beth is going to be filming her she's going to have the spirit box going but wearing headphones and blindfolded to take all of her senses away so all she really has is what the spirit box is telling her through the headphones and beth is filming her while scotty and myself are at the other end of the location asking the questions I just saw two All right, eyes. I'm going in. All right. Tell me when to start. Do I just start? We're staying? starting right now. Right now, just start saying whatever you hear when you come on. <sighs> Who is sitting in the staircase right now? Why is the staircase a portal? Corbin. Do you use the gate down there to go between our world and your world? What? It was Nathan's voice. That was weird. I told you. Are you using my voice to communicate with Kara? While we were asking questions, Kara says something that is coming from the spirit box that I found extremely interesting to our investigation and to this whole story. You're in my world. I just got you. When I heard that response, it gave me chills because in my own opinion, hearing that come from the spirit box and basically Kara saying the response out loud, it confirms everything that we have been investigating with both of these locations, with the gate and the funeral home, because they both connect to each other and it makes sense. And it makes sense to what Vanessa had told us from the very beginning that there's a portal between worlds here. And I, firm, and I firmly believe that we have documented proof of this. And I believe that response just further validates and confirms everything that we have been trying to prove. This is gonna sound weird, okay guys. I know we've all seen the movie Bill and Ted, right? Do you remember in the movie when they were in that like candy land, weird dimensional world where it's like the bunny rabbit and yeah. you know what I mean? It was like all those, oh that creepy ass scene where it's like long hallways of just of crazy stuff. I feel like we're in that kind of world right now. I'm looking down this hallway and I hear that sound right now, that weird, this ambient sound. I feel like we're in that kind of environment right now. I feel like this whole entire building just went to a different dimension. Going into this investigation, I was 100% skeptical. Vanessa told me only days before the start of this that there is a portal between our world and the spirit world. And when you approach it, you will experience it. Hey, how are you? Do you feel like this evidence is, is a groundbreaking? Yes, it's very groundbreaking. It answers some questions, that's for sure. Is there spirit energy inside this gate? What about this gate is a portal? 
Where did it come from? How did you feel about your name being, or being like acknowledged? It scared me. Do you know Vanessa Milligan? Oh my God, I got a yes to that question. When you found out that the building that's connected directly to it, that's the brick building, was originally made of wood, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, it, it made so much sense. The tears of the people who went for them, or the, I mean, their whole life, and even while they're there, if they're stuck, they're crying and their their family's crying. There's no answer. There's no answer in that limestone. If the theory is correct, it plays it over and over and over and over and over and over again. I've grown up here. I've never heard of these. I've never heard these stories. And this is something that it doesn't just go away. You know, maybe someone might forget the story, but the history it and the trauma it doesn't go away. It sticks around and it tries to tell its story over and over again to anyone that will listen. And I really think that that's our biggest um, potential accomplishment with all of this is being able to tell those stories again because these aren't just people in, in time. These are our, this is our family. This is some of our family today, people walking the streets today here. This is their family, um, their story too. Vanessa's experience is the most extraordinary story that I have ever been able to share. And the crazy part is, this gateway sits directly in the center of downtown Pampa, Texas. People need to understand that there is other things in this world that we don't fully understand. Did you know there's a gate in this town that's a portal between heaven and earth? You can feel energy there. You can feel that something's there. And when you go, you'll experience something. Do you have anything as far as experiences you want to have? Right here, anything personal encounters with the gate? No. This has answered a lot of my questions. I'm not threatened by it. I'm Nathan Withers, a self-taught documentary filmmaker hailing from the Texas Panhandle, passionate about documenting the unexplained. The next chapter of my story starts with yours.